Here we are with lesson number 20, the final project. You have the opportunity to build a rock, paper, scissors game or a meme maker app. If you go through the chapter, it will show you how to do both. I'm going to cover both. The first video will be the rock, paper, scissors game. So let's take a look here. Pretty simple. It's based on the game we've all played before. And you'll set up the layout and you'll select an option and then the computer will have a random option and depending on what they chose you'll either win lose or draw all right there's no source code provided so we're going to do all this ourselves we're going to use all the things we've learned in this whole course let's go ahead and open xcode and create a new xcode project this will be ios single view application choose next let's call this RPS for rock, paper, scissors. Choose next. And then we'll save it wherever. Just remember where you put it. Okay. First thing we're going to do is create the logic behind the game so that uh, we can create what we call a sign enum and a game state enum. And then we'll create the UI. So First thing to do, come over to the navigation panel and right click and choose new file. Here we're going to select iOS and then Swift file, click next. We're going to give this a name, we're going to call this sign and then press return. All right, this generates a sign.swift file and it looks very similar to uh, playground files that we've worked with, except when you enter code here, you won't see any results in the sidebar. In order to see the results of the source code here, you have to apply it to an app and then run it on the device or simulator. So with the sign, we're going to create an enum and it's going to be called sign. Oops. And it's going to have three cases, rock, paper, and scissors. <laughs> Scissors. Boy, if I could spell, that would be great. All right. Now, once we have that, we want to have a calculated property that returns the emoji for the given sign. So, we've done that before, where we say var emoji, which is a string, and then we're going to return a string depending on which case we've selected. So we're going to use a switch statement because those handle everything. Notice we get the autocomplete and I'm going to press tab. Now, now we have this code template. So let's enter the value we're checking against is self. Remember self then returns all the values associated with sign because that's where we're, we're at. So the first case we're going to check against is dot rock and then here we're going to return the emoji for the rock hand symbol. To get to that we're going to do control command space and that brings up our good old emoji window and we're going to want this guy right here closed fist and then next uh, we're going to delete this default because we're going to have a complete exhaustive switch statement so let's say case dot paper and we're going to return another hand sign and this one is this guy right here raised hand then we're going to say case dot scissors and for that we're going to return this guy right here which is victory hand okay very good the next thing we need to do is create another file and the way I did it here let me go ahead and open this up here the way I did this I right clicked on this folder if you don't right click on the folder like wherever you're at you can just choose file new and then choose new file um, 
But if you want the file to appear within this group, this RPS group, you just right click on that group and then say new file. Go ahead and choose Swift and click next. And this is going to be called game state. Then press return. So for the game state, we're going to let me let me reference the book for a second and show you what I'm referring to. Okay. So we have this little diagram here. The game state has four different states. We have start, we have a win, lose, or draw. Now, depending on, so player turn, that's us. Let's say we chose rock. And then the computer turn chose paper, well, they would lose. If they chose scissors, they would win. If they chose rock, then it would be a draw. So this represents kind of the logic of the game state. But notice we have these four, start, win, lose, draw. So that's what we want to create here. We're going to say enum game state. And it's going to have start, win, lose, and draw for the case. All right, now let's go back to our sign and we want an instance method on sign that will calculate the result of whether if I choose rock and then the opponent chooses scissors, for example, I want it to calculate return a game state that tells me whether I won. So we, the way we do that, we say a function, and the book doesn't tell us what to call this function, but I'm just going to say, I'm just going to call it um, take turn, and then we're going to reference the opponent, which is a sign, and then we're going to return a game state. Okay, now, this is a little tricky, and the book, of course, doesn't tell us how to figure it out. But if you wanted, you could create a playground and you can experiment with it. But I want to show you how I did this. So the first thing I did is I said, Brent, what are we going to do? And I said, I don't know. And then I thought about it and I came up with the following. First thing we want to do, and let me show you in the book and, and kind of explain what I'm talking about. If I have if I've chosen rock, then I need to check against paper, scissors, and rock. If I chose paper, then I also have to check the computer against paper, scissors, rock. So I have to make this check multiple times depending on what I choose. Well, the thing is, is that this method doesn't know what I've chosen. So I need to check each one of these and then return a value based on it, based on what the opponent did. So what I'm going to do is First, I'm going to switch, do a switch statement against my value, which is called self. And here I'm going to check rock. Let me delete this. I'm just going to delete this for a second so that uh, we can say dot paper, oops, dot scissors. Okay, now. Here's the fun part. When I'm in this, when I'm checking against myself, I say, okay, if I chose rock, then I want to check against the opponent, which could also be rock, paper, and scissors. So follow, follow what I'm doing here. Check this out. I'm going to do another switch statement. This time, I'm checking against the opponent. So here, I'm going to say, is the opponent rock? And let me just delete this for a second and it will all make sense once it's complete. The next check is paper and then of course dot scissors. Okay, now if I have chosen rock and the opponent has chosen rock, well, I need to return game state dot draw because we're both the same, so nobody won. If, however, I choose rock and the opponent chooses paper, well, I've lost. So the game state 
is lose. Guess what? Scissors return game state dot win because I win. All right, now watch this. Let's copy, press Command C, and I'm going to paste, and then I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to paste. Now I got to update it. Don't forget to change it. So now the question is paper. Well, if paper is rock, that means I win. If paper is paper, then, well, it's a draw. And if it's paper, scissors, oh, I lost. So it's a lose. Now, scissors. If scissors go against rock, uh, you lose. Scissors against paper is a win. And scissors against scissors is a draw. Whoops. <laughs> draw. All right, check that out. See how that works? Again, what's happening is I pass in this sign that the opponent made, and then I check, hey, what am I first? Am I a rock? Well, if I'm a rock, then this is the options that I have. Or if I'm paper, these are the options, and scissors, and so on. Very good. All right. The next thing we need to do is add a couple of other things in our sign Swift file that allow us to generate a random sign. So one thing we want to do is import what we call the gameplay kit. Then I'm going to create a constant called random choice, and this is a method in the the gameplay kit SDK has this thing called GK random distribution and it has this thing where we pass in lowest value in our case it's a zero and highest value is a two all right now I want another uh, function that's going to take all this and return a random sign so we're going to call this function random sign and it returns a sign okay so there's a method we say let sign equal random choice and there's a method on this random choice thing here called next int and that's going to give me a random number based on the lowest and highest values okay now so I have this integer, and based on the integer, I'm going to return a sign. In this case, I'm going to say if sign equals zero, then we'll return rock as our sign. Else, if sign equals one, we're going to return paper. And if it's not, then we're going to say return, whoops, return scissors. Okay, let's review what we've talked about here. So, we've created a constant that generates a random value. So we get a random integer here, and then we check, is this zero? Well, then let's return rock. If it's one, return paper. Otherwise, return scissors. Every time you call this method, this function is going to return a random sign. All right, this is all the logic behind the app. Be sure to watch the next video where we will complete the UI and have a running app. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.